Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where your likes, comments, and subs are always greatly appreciated. I have the Zoom R20 multi-track recorder in front of me and I've made a variety of videos on this device. One of the main questions or concerns that seems to pop up frequently in the comments of the other videos that I've made has to do with the inputs for the R20. People are concerned about the limited number of quarter jack inputs that the R20 has. So you can, as you can see, the R20, it's a 16 track recorder and it has eight inputs. You can record eight tracks simultaneously. Inputs one and two are combo jacks, so they'll accept uh, quarter inch feeds or XLR feeds, whereas inputs three through eight will only accept XLR feeds. Additionally, inputs five through eight will also give you the option for phantom power, depending on if you've got uh, condenser mics. So people who are relying a lot on quarter inch jacks are concerned that they won't be able to effectively record with the R20. Any of the tracks that you use record, any of the inputs that you use record to the corresponding track. So input one will record to either tracks one or nine. Input two will record to track two or 10, all the way down to input H eight, which will record to track eight or track 16. So people are concerned, well, you only really have four tracks that you could potentially use with the quarter inch jack. And that's not true. It's very easy to just record and then move the tracks around. I've made a video about that. I'll post it up here and then in a link below. But beyond that, what if you have to record more than, or need more than two quarter inch jacks? Because you're using maybe a guitar, you've got a bass, you've got a synth that you want to record in stereo. Maybe you even are using electronic drums that's coming from um, one of like the, the drum programmable heads and it's running stereo out as quarter inch jacks. How are you going to be able to record those instruments simultaneously on the R20? Well, luckily you do have some options that are available to you if you purchase the correct chords and if you use them appropriately. So I'm gonna show you how to use a couple different chords and cables for the R20 when you're hooking up your instruments and uh, we'll, we'll go through a variety of what works and what doesn't work. So first up, this is one type of cable that you could use and I recommend you use cables like this for a lot of your instruments if you can. So this has a 3.5 millimeter stereo jack it's a TRS end on this side, and it gets split into two mono signals. So it'll get split into the tip or the ring from the stereo 3.5 inch jack to these quarter inch jacks. So it just separates this out to left and right stereo signal. So I can use something like a pocket operator, which has a stereo out that's 3.5 millimeters, and then run this into the inputs one and two and record my pocket operator in stereo by using inputs one and two on the R20. So this obviously works. This is a 3.5 millimeter stereo breakout cable to quarter inch jacks. So if you could use something like this, I recommend that you, you do use it. It works well. Up next, we have something kind of similar where it's a 3.5 millimeter jack on this end and it's stereo, so it's TRS, but this is also a stereo breakout cable that will break it out into two mono XLR jacks. So you've got tip and ring that are XLR. Now this can work as well, depending on how you set things up. So this is an unbalanced cable. If you are running this from a synthesizer or a keyboard or a mixing board, something that's sending the audio signal with its own power, you can probably run a signal through this. So this would be an unbalanced signal that you're now running, where if you look at the pins on this, really only pin number two is gonna be hot that's sending the signal. The first pin really is dead, is not being used, and the bottom pin is a ground which is tied to the sleeve down here from the 3.5 millimeter jack. So again, a stereo breakout cable that breaks out to mono XLR signals, this can work with powered devices. Lastly, another type of cable that you could come across <clears throat> is something that looks a little bit similar where it has a stereo 3.5 millimeter jack on this end, so it's a TRS cable, but then the um, signal is gonna be sent as a balance signal to the XLR. So here, you're actually using pins one and two with the ground being pin number three. So if you use this type of cable, you just have to be careful on what you're sending through it and the way that a balanced cable works running into the R20. Because if you send a true stereo signal that has a left and right on here and the left and right 
is really they're just mirror images of each other. It's not like the left side is vastly different than the right side. If you send a perfect balanced stereo signal through here, it'll actually negate itself once it reaches the R20 and you won't hear anything. But if you do send a mono signal through this, you'll be able to, or you could be able to hear something come through the XLR end on this end and go into the R20. In general, I don't really recommend that you use this type of cable. So this would be a 3.5 millimeter balanced cable to XLR. It's probably not what you want, so I would likely just stay away from this type of cable. But what I thought I would demonstrate for you all here is that I'll use my uh, PO128 Mega Man pocket operator. I'm going to set its volume to be 50%, so it's going to be the exact same volume. I'm going to run all of these cords through here sequentially and then record into the different inputs on the R20. I'm not going to change anything, so it's going to be the exact same sequence of a video game cover that I'm kind of working on for my next project, but I'm going to run it through with each one of these cables. So you'll get at first this one, which will be the 3.5 millimeter to the breakout mono quarter inch jacks. That's going to run into inputs one and two. Then we'll run it through this cable, which will have the 3.5 millimeter stereo jack on this end, but it's gonna be a breakout to mono XLRs. This is an unbalanced cable. And then we'll finally run it with this one um, in stereo with this 3.5 millimeter balanced cable to XLR. And then I'll run it in mono. When I run it in mono, um, just be aware that it will put the click track from the pocket operator out, so it's not going to sound that great. But it just to demonstrate that you can, if you are running something that's in mono, you can get it to work with a balance cable. So I'm going to run all of those in sequence. I'm just, I'm just going to keep it to like, you know, 12, 15 seconds each, but I'll run them back to back to back. So this way you can hear what it's like. And at the end, then I'll uh, kind of wrap things up. So as you can see and hear, you can get sound out of all of these cables depending on the settings that you use and the way that you hook all of these cables up. So I ran the pocket operator out with the exact same volume every single time, the exact same sequence every single time. I set the gains for all of these channels to be exactly the same, and I put the faders all exactly at zero decibels, and I didn't modify the sounds in post. This way you can compare and contrast how all of these different um, channels sound when you use these different cables. And you can see there's not that much of a difference when you're using these appropriately. Maybe some little differences in volume, but you can still hear everything pretty clearly. If you're using a cable like this, it's absolutely appropriate. It's going to work well for you, but you still are only going to be limited to using inputs one and two because you need to have the quarter inch jacks. But if you are using a cable like this, which would be like a stereo out, as long as it's an unbalanced cable that's sending these things out, the sound out is mono signals. It breaks out to mono signals of tip and ring. You can use something like this. The caveat with it is just be careful because this is a little bit more susceptible to picking up hum and outside noises. Different types of interference patterns can be picked up with this type of cable. So I don't really recommend using long stretches of this kind of cable. I don't recommend running these things on the ground or around your power supply, especially if you have USB power supplies nearby keep these cables kind of short to three feet or six feet that would be my recommendation to minimize picking up any kind of um, uh, interference in sound if you get one of these cables this would be a stereo 3.5 millimeter to xlr balanced cable you recognize if you are running an identical stereo sound left and right through this thing the way that a balanced signal works is that those sounds are going to cancel each other out and you're going to get nothing it's going to sound like nothing but if you run a mono signal through 
only one of the pins are going to be hot with the, with the sound and what the other pins do is that it'll actually if you do pick up any kind of interference noise this does a much better job of canceling the noise when you're using a balanced cable but in this case if you're running something that's out of a synth that is sending a stereo signal I just would avoid these types of cables so in general stick to these types of cables if you need them for synths or keyboards or stick to these types of cables if you do need to run something else simultaneously and take advantage of these XLR inputs and you're not using dynamic or condenser mics. You could still get sound with powered instruments like this. This won't work if you're using guitars, things with like passive pickups. You're still going to need to use quarter inch jacks and you're going to take advantage of the high Z input for guitars with passive pickups. Stick with, with if you've got synths or you're, you're sending in signals from a direct box or a mixing board, something that's powered, this can work for you. All right, so hopefully it puts some people's minds at ease if you're on the fence about buying the R20, if you think it's going to work for you, if you are really limited or worried about the inputs, there are ways that you could work around it. Again, you can look at that other video that I posted below about moving your tracks around so you're not just stuck recording input one to track one. You can move things around easily. And you can also use cables like this if you need to record more instruments simultaneously. Hope you found this video helpful. If you have other questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I'll get to them as soon as possible. And hope you found this video helpful. All right, thanks. Goodbye.